709 Reasons Why is brought to you by Calman. Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays and welcome to another episode of 709 Reasons Why. Today, we have a special guest in the studio, Tim Walker from AJA. Tim? Hey Dave, thanks for uh, having me here to join you today. Thanks for coming. How many years have you been working with AJA? Well, I've been with AJ for just over about five years now, so always in product management, and I'm currently the product manager of a lot of their color technologies, or our color technologies, with a color box, and also our, our FrameSync line of products, and uh, a few other ones for the company. So, been enjoying my time with uh, with AJ for the past five or so years. Five or so years, okay. And the color box has been in development for about how long now? Well, we just introduced the color box at IBC in 2022, so it's been out on the market for about about two years at this point. Uh, it was been in development for some time before that, and uh, we're thrilled to be able to continue to develop and innovate on the platform for the last couple of years. And for people that know, know Tim, can you talk a little bit about more what the color box is? What are users buying it for? What are they using it for? Besides what we're going to talk about in a little while with Countman. Sure. Yeah. Well, the color box is really driven by industry need and feedback. And a lot of people came to me and said, "Tim, we need a we need a 4K LUT box." You know. And so taking that idea a little bit to the extreme, we already had um, our FS HDR product, which had a 3D LUT built into it, and it was it did four channels of HD, 3D LUT processing in HD, or a single channel in 4K, but it was, it is uh, a one rack unit box. It's a big box, difficult for on-set use, which is where people were really asking for the LUT box. And uh, so we took that, that to heart and developed <clears throat> A definition uh, that ended up turning into color box, and so this is a single channel 4K LUT processing device, and it does so much more beyond that. Uh, but that's it at its core, and so it's got a 33 point 3D LUT processor in it with mm -hmm. tetrahedral interpolation, and in the AJA color pipeline, it's built out around that with a bunch of 1D LUTs and three by three matrices, which we'll show you a little bit later in this video. Uh, but beyond that, we didn't want to make this just a, a device for onset look management and monitor calibration, we want to expand beyond that. And so not only does it have the AJA color processing pipeline, but it also has five other color processing pipelines with color science from Colorfront, from NBC Universal, from BBC, um, and also from a, a different company called Chromarama, and we have their Orion Convert algorithm built into this, which actually does its HDR conversions using floating point math to get away from the interpolation errors that you commonly get with a 3 LUT. So this product is built for a lot of different applications from live production to onset to monitor calibration. So this is like the Swiss army knife of LUT boxes. Whatever your need is, DP, monitor calibration, color pipeline manipulation, anything and everything you can pretty much do with the AJ Color Box today. Absolutely. Color correction, camera correction, people are using it for onset LED lighting uh, color changes. There's lots of applications for this little box. So you mentioned a couple other features with the AJ Color Box. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Certainly. There's uh, there's definitely a few worth mentioning. One is, is that uh, Latency is a critical element of any production, whether it's live production or on-set film production. And so one thing I really worked hard with our engineering team on was reducing the latency of the overall processing in the box. So no matter what frame rate or video format you're running through here, there's always gonna be a guaranteed latency of less than half of a video line, which was really important for live production mm -hmm. because there's downstream products like the production switcher, which usually has an auto timer for plus or minus half a line on every input. Mm -hmm. And so by maintaining a really low latency in this box, we're able to meet that auto timer requirement of the downstream switcher. So important for live production, mm -hmm. but again, also important anywhere video production is being done. Half of a video line with all of the manipulation you have within that color pipeline, that's pretty important. Impressive. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We've uh, maintained that low latency, even though we've added some additional features. Uh, we've added more features for down conversion. So some people are doing 4K, but want to produce an HD output. And so we've added a down converter in here, and that only adds three additional lines of, excuse me, four additional lines of latency. Yeah. Okay. 
It's also got a rich web user interface. Um, so it's got an ethernet port on the back of it that allows us to serve up a web server when you type in the IP address of the unit on a web browser. And uh, so we serve up a rich web user interface for people to access all the great features of the color box. I love that. So you have the web user interface for users to quickly and easily access it from any device, really. Um, but there's also an app, right? The uh, what's it called? The eMini? There's eMini Setup, which is the app that is used to just initially set the IP address of the box so then you can find it. Um, so it's got this USB port on the front of it, which we you know plug in the USB mm -hmm. cable to set the, the IP address. This is also used for if you want to have control over this over a wireless network, you can plug in a, a wireless, a, a Wi-Fi dongle into this and then locate it somewhere else where you might not have a physical ethernet connection to it and be able to get access to its web UI that way. That's excellent. So so very quick and easy setup if you don't know your IP address while you're running around on set with that USB cable. Once you get that IP address, connect to it on that network from any device really quickly and easily. Absolutely. And just expanding on that a little bit and something that has helped our integration that we've done is we've got a pretty robust SDK or API for the product. Um, so it's built on open API and it makes it really intuitive for third parties like CalMan to develop integrations to be able to control every aspect of the color box. Can you take a moment to maybe walk us through some of the web user interface for the AGA color box and maybe show us a couple of the key features? Certainly. Uh, it will take some time to go through in detail, so I'll go through just a little bit at a high level. So here on the left side, you've got your video preview, which is showing, uh, showing up right here. Um, so if you had live video playing through the box, you'd be able to see it here. Um, down in this area is called is kind of like our pipeline view, and this is the AJA color pipeline that we're looking at. And right now the frame store is on, uh, playing out this still image, and it's going through the seven different nodes of uh, of uh, processing in the AJA color pipeline. Very user friendly, user intuitive. You turn things on by clicking nodes and stuff like that. You can click on each one of these, and the right side populates with the different uh, files uh, that may be loaded into the onboard library for the color box. So. Very intuitive and easy to use, and once you've got things that are set up in here, uh, the CalMan integration uses this part of the product great, which is the presets. So within the AJA color pipeline, we have the ability to store up to 10 different presets, which includes all of the files that are loaded into these different nodes and the state of the nodes, whether they're on or off, and can save it as a single preset. So if you've got multiple calibrations that have 1D LUTs and 3D LUTs, they're all stored here as a pipeline preset, and they're very easy easily recalled and loaded um, when needed. So pretty powerful and yet simple to use web user interface. So a user can effectively have many, many calibrations or many, many use cases. They switch through very quickly, whether it's on set or in, in the post house or, or whatever they're using it for, they can just really quickly switch between these calibrations. So for example, with CalMan, you might be able to have a BT709 calibration, a DCI calibration, a BT2020 calibration, have them all stored as those presets and then quickly switch between them through that web user interface. Absolutely, without having to worry about which 1D LUT goes with the 3D LUT and what have you, it's just a simple preset that you load for the different calibration that you're looking for. Because that preset stores the entire pipeline as you saved it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. So one of the things that we were doing when we were doing our integration with the AJ Colorbox is we wanted to make sure that we made it very simple here at Portrait to not only create the 1D and 3D LUTs to correct your display when using CalMan for display calibration, but we actually, within CalMan, save that to a preset automatically for the user. So the user, instead of having to load a 1D LUT specifically into the 1D LUT memory, a 3D LUT into the 3D LUT memory, CalMan takes care of that all behind the scenes, and then we just save that as a preset so the user just recalls it without having to know what LUT goes where and which 1D LUT matches up with which 3D LUT. We recently released the new AJA color box workflow, which not only walks the user through performing a calibration with CalMan both for SDR and HDR, but during that process, you can actually set the startup preset, which is the uh, preset that when the color box reboots, it goes to automatically. So if you want to always start with 709, you can go right to 709 at that startup, or if it you know, again, if you lose power, you move a room, you move to a different location, you can set that within CalMan itself. Um, and we've also set it so that CalMan will 
label the presets from Calman so that if you're calibrating for say D65, BT 1886 in 709, it'll label the preset as such. So your users can really quickly look at the AJA color box and know exactly what they calibrated in Calman into which preset. No more questioning, no more needing to say, oh, did I put 709 in number four or did I put 709 in number seven? Um, so we've, we've done that with the new workflow and um, we think we have a pretty tight integration. Yeah, and from what I've seen, it looks like you've utilized a lot of what the color box has to offer for this specific application. And so being able to see the integration that you've done, utilizing the SDK that we have, and being able to control our frame store dynamically in order to build the test patches for the display with the right color so you can then measure the differences and calculate your LUTs, all the way down to developing the LUTs and saving them onto the color box and saving the presets. It's really utilizing everything that the, the color box has to offer. We've actually, I, I'm glad you mentioned the uh, the te internal test pattern generator through your through your frame store. We've actually had a couple customers, I know, reach out to us and say they bought the color box simply because they wanted that higher bit depth pattern generator. Mm -hmm. I think uh, up to 12 bits, am I correct, out of right. the SDI? So we've had a couple customers who have said, you know, I want a 12 bit SDI pattern generator and the color box has that built right into it, all controllable via Calman. So we've actually had a couple of customers reach out to us and say that was their use case for creating that. Correct, yeah, and that's something that we also worked really hard on this box for, and that is, you know, a lot of workflows are 10-bit, you know, YCBCR mm -hmm. in broadcast, but there's a lot of applications in post and in mm -hmm. other where they need to have full 12-bit RGB pipelines, color pipelines, and so uh, the color box is a full 12-bit RGB color processing device. So we can support RGB for for four up to full 4K 30P. Um, so uh, yeah, it is a full, it does support full RGB 444 12 bit. Super so the powerful. highest quality, you know, video processing on the market. Super powerful. Dave, you've mentioned workflows a couple times, and for our customers that might not be familiar with what a Calman workflow is, maybe you could just describe that for us. Yeah, so, so Calman workflows are sort of uh, part of the essential DNA of Calman, right? So um, Calman itself will connect to a pattern source, connect to a generator, connect to a device such as the AJ color box to perform the calibration. But how you perform the calibration, the steps you take to achieve your success, we call that a workflow. And so what we can do is we can build these step-by-step -step guides that walk you through the calibration process, walk you through the task at hand, uh, making it easier than ever before to achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve during the calibration process. And so we were very excited to make an AGA color box workflow. We really wanted to make sure that your customers and our customers were able to quickly, efficiently, and effectively go through that process of building a 1D and 3D LUT. They don't have to know file names. They don't know, have to know how to export a file or upload a file to the color box. Calman takes all, care of all of that during the workflow process. And uh, our customers really appreciate that ease of use that we developed for them. That sounds awesome. So it's really kind of bringing a, what could be a complicated uh, process into something that is just a very simple step-by-step -step way to achieve a That's display our goal. calibration. That's our goal. Make something very complicated and then take it so that you don't have to be a color scientist. You don't necessarily have to be a video engineer to go through and use the color box and use Calman to create that calibration correction. Wonderful. And for those that actually want to have it even easier than using the workflow to calibrate, we've actually just shot an AGA color box how-to video using the workflow, and we'll put a link down below. Beyond the color box, there's uh, quite a few more products that AJ manufactures, and I understand there's a few of them that you use in part of your uh, workflows. Which ones are those? Yeah, so we actually make a software program called Virtual Forge, and that runs on Windows, and it works with the AJA IO. I guess it works with the AGA IO line, right? The uh, AGA TTAP, the uh, IO 4K Plus, the Kona, um, even I think the cards that go inside of a Windows machine, such as your Kona 5, your Kona 4. The right. uh, Virtual Forge, what it'll do is you launch it, it'll grab the card and it turns it into a pattern generator. So customers that are looking for say an HDMI or an SDI pattern generator that does everything that the Kona card does or the IO 4K, or I, I always say IO 4K, but the yeah. IO lineup yeah. does are able to uh, purchase Virtual Forge and use that and have an instant HDMI SDI generator. Wonderful.
Yeah. Is it the IO line? IO4. We, we, I always say we, IO4. We call it the, it's the, but, in AJA terms, it's the mobile IO line. Mobile IO line. Yeah, because people fine? know the IO 4K yeah. and IO line. Yeah. So, so I have the IO 4K yeah. plus here. I use this. Yeah. This is my personal one. Yeah. Um, and I use that all the time for calibration stuff. I love it. So let me ask you though, like you use your virtual forge to drive these things. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why Kalman can't drive this to do the same thing though, right? Correct. Correct. So There's it's just a, a different way of skinning the cat of getting a pattern generator. It is a different way of skinning the cat. So with the AJA color box, what we do is we use your built-in pattern generator. And with the uh, IO <clears> lineup <throat> and the uh, like Kona cards, we the Virtual Forge is the pattern generator. Okay. So we're drawing the patterns, we're creating the patterns. But two ways to skin the cat, right? So you can make a patch with the AJA color box. You can make a patch with Virtual Forge and say the IO 4K+. Plus. Um, what's really nice for those customers that already have these cards for their production workflows, they don't necessarily have to buy the color box in addition. And for those that buy the color box for their color workflows, don't necessarily have to buy the Kona card in addition. So it allows our customers to really use any of your products uh, that work for the purpose of pattern generation and achieve their goals. Tim, so what was your interest in working with Calman and being part of the Calman Ready program and having such integration with Calman with the AJ color box? Yeah, well, Calman's a leader in the industry of monitor calibration. And the things that we're doing today with being a leader in SDR and HDR color processing, we thought it was important to work with somebody with the caliber of Calman to help kind of bring this color managed workflow to more customers. And so the tool that we developed, Colorbox, lends itself well to this monitoring, uh, monitor calibration application. And uh, why not work with one of the best in the industry? Well, Tim, thank you so much. And you know, one of the reasons we're very excited to work with HA is this, this product, when I saw it, was just so powerful. There's so many, you know, your pipeline is very sophisticated. We can do so much with it, and it allows us to really bring the power of Calman and our 1D LUT engine and our 3D LUT engine uh, to more customers, but not only uh, to build those LUTs, but to have them on such a processor with so much versatility that we can really cater to our DPs, our colorists, our end users. Like I said, we have some people using it as a pattern generator simply to get 12-bit precision out of the color box. And, and start quantifying some of their Dolby Vision workflows that are that are 12 bits. So there's just so much power here that we were really excited to get our hands dirty with it. Our engineering team was very excited to get into it, and we really enjoyed working on the product. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you to help bring this integration to market. So thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tim, for coming by and showing us a little bit more about the AGA color box and all of its cool features. And it's been a real pleasure working with you on the integration into Calman and really bringing the power of the color box to our customers. Um, and for those of you that would like to see Tim, he's going to be at IBC coming up. And uh, feel free to meet him there and pick his brain. Sounds good. And thanks for having me here, Dave. It's been a pleasure working with you as well on the integration. And for those that are looking for more information on how this integration works, click on the link to have access to the tutorial for the workflow. All right. We'll see you next time.